Hi, everyone, and welcome to our week three of our Prime Virtual Stations of the Cross. It's so good to be here and to pray together. Thank you. Thank you again. We need prayer. That is the most important, you know, gift. Uh, to us. So thank you. Thank you for joining us and praying with us, the Stations of the Cross. Today, uh, we will be moving from the eighth station and um, to the 11th station. And uh, we will have with us Father Pierre, uh, who is from Cameroon and is here in the United States learning English because he's going to go to Thailand uh, in June. And then we will have Father Simone, who will help us with the ninth station, and uh, he will help us from the Philippines. And then Father Anand will help us with the tenth station. He's a Pi missionary in uh, Ivory Coast, and then um, we will end with Father Paolo, who is even our uh, live guest, and uh, he's from Thailand, so he's going to join us uh, um, after uh, from Thailand. So thank you, thank you, Paolo, for being with us today, and I want to say uh, thank you to all our staff and uh, to Marina. She will be with us again today. And then uh, I want to just uh, um, remind you that we will find everything in our uh, virtual station guide. If you didn't get it, you, can st you still have time to email us or to contact us. And uh, we will definitely, uh, we will mail it to you uh, free of charge, of course. And uh, one more thing, today we will have uh, the project that we will be sponsoring is the uh, Sponsorship Set to Distance Program. Uh, and uh, we will talk about this with Father Paolo. Michelle is going to share a link that will lead you. If you want, you can go to the chat. And um, you actually, this link will lead you to our sponsorship set to distance page where you will see children uh, that are available to be sponsored. We will talk about this in a little bit, children that actually live in uh, Thailand. Uh, and Father Paul, of course, takes care of, it, of them and uh, he will tell us more about them. We are so blessed uh, to have him with us, but now, it's time to pray together. So let's start in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. God of power and mercy, in love you sent your Son, that we may be cleansed of sin and live with you forever. Bless us as we gather to reflect on his suffering and death that we may learn from his example the way we should go. We ask this through that same Christ, our Lord. Amen. The eighth station. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. For indeed the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. At that time people will say to the mountains, Fall upon us and to the hills, cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Yeah. 
situation that Jesus endures the suffering, the women of Jerusalem don't remain indifferent. These women, despite their status in society, saw their love for Jesus by weeping. This event makes me think of the situation of other women in my county in Cameroon. In my country, the men have the power to decide about the life of their children in the village. While the women do the, the housework, for example, cooking, fetching the water, taking care of the children, and have not voice in decision making. The women have the heart to see the suffering of the others. When the son endures the, diff the difficult situation, their hearts don't find peace, so they express their feeling by crying like this woman of Jerusalem. In spite of this situation, where they don't have any possibility, these women manifest their compassion and participation by weeping. They are considered inferior, they are mistreated, they don't have power, but they have something more than power. By sympathizing, they show their compassionate heart and their love toward others. Jesus, knowing their heart, say to them, Don't cry for me, but for yourself and your children. Don't cry for Jesus, because you have a difficult time. Jesus sees these women and he has compassion toward them. He knows their place in society. Like this woman of Jerusalem, we are all called to recognize Jesus in his passion through the person who suffer in our society. Let us pray to God to help us to have this courage to turn to Jesus and to have this heart full of compassion toward others. Let us pray. Lord, grant us willing spirits that we may be your instrument, instruments on earth. Lord Jesus, help us walk in your steps. The ninth station, Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A reading from the letter to the Romans. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things, we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. ninth station, Jesus falls uh, the third time. How many times uh, did we fall in our uh, life? I mean, not just uh, physically, but professionally, emotionally, morally, who knows, even financially, at school, at work, uh, in our family, or uh, friendship relationship. We do fall sometimes in our life. I remember uh, when I was in a rural area in the central part of the Philippines, uh, in Antique, when uh, uh, for reaching communities far from the town where we used to live, we had to travel by motorbike or even by foot uh, for hours. And it happened 
to fall. Uh, then somebody was always ready to help us, to help me. Uh, then I got up again and continue my travel. That's what we do, uh, brothers and sisters. We fall and we get up again and continue our journey. Yet sometimes uh, we get up because we have somebody else who helps us standing again. We get up uh, because someone takes care of uh, our wounds and us. Actually, we get up because Jesus helps us, heals our wound, physical, emotional, and moral wounds. We get up because the community, the church, help us and heals us. There is a, a popular uh, devotion here in the Philippines uh, for Nuestro Padre Jesus Nazareno, o Mahal na Puong Jesus Nazareno. You can see behind me the image. It's called also popularly Black Nazarene and dates back uh, this devotion back to the 1605 when the statue of Jesus kneeling on one knee arrived in the Philippines from Mexico. The statue was made uh, of a kind of wood that uh, darkens uh, as it ages so that's why now it's black. Many Filipinos uh, believe uh, it has uh, miracles miraculous uh, healing powers and uh, that by touching it uh, or even by throwing some ropes uh, uh, they can get blessings uh, for, for themselves or for their beloved ones. Last year in January uh, six million of people gathered together along the way uh, for a, row, a route long as three almost four miles. The gospel actually doesn't say anything about uh, Jesus falling, yet most likely Jesus fell under the weight of the cross. So the Black Nazarene statue reminds us that Jesus, the Lord, is next to us and also uh, help us to stand up again and continue our journey. So may we always look at Jesus and find strength to continue our journey. May we, the church, always look at Jesus and help one another to stand up whenever we fall and continue the journey following Jesus in our life. Let us pray. Lord, grant us constancy that we may be willing to stand by those in need. Lord Jesus, help us walk in your steps. The tenth station. Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, o Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. Then they, they also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be, in order that the passage of scripture might be fulfilled that says, they divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Tenth station, Jesus is striped off his garments. Whenever I come across this station, there are many images that pass by my memory, especially the images that I come across in my daily life in my mission station in the country of Ivory Coast. And I would like to share some of them along with you. Therefore, you might understand the mystery of Tenth Station in a better way. Let's have a look at them. 
I'm here in the plantation of Kaju, which is also known as Anakad, and I am presenting you its fruit, attractive, colorful fruit. But the most important, essential part of this fruit is its nut, which is here, not the colorful part. It is not exterior what is eatable, but what is inside this nut is eatable after having processed. Not the difference. What is inside is more important than what is exterior. Here I am again in the plantation of coffee. I know that we love coffee because that refreshes our mind and gives us some fresh thoughts to our mind. I wish that you make a difference. Look at these grains. And look at these grains. It is not these grains that we use to make coffee, but the beans which are inside this that we use to make coffee. It is not external that we use for making coffee, but it is the internal of this bean which we use to make coffee. Kind of you know the difference? Hi again, we are in the field of cacao. You call it as a cocoa. It is the fruit from which a delicious chocolate is made. But we should understand one fact. This is not what is exterior which is used to make the chocolate. But what is inside this fruit, it is the basic and essence of our chocolate that we eat. Not this difference. Here I am again with my car that I use for my apostolate. Here also I wish that you note one thing. Don't look what it has as its color and its shape and design. But I wish that you look for what it is in its power and its performance. Likewise, look at me for what I am, not for what I have, what I have as clothes, what I have as watch. Don't look at me for what I have, but look at me for what I am. Kindly note the difference. So all the things that I have shared with you have one thing in common. The one thing in common is the difference between what is interior and what is exterior. What is exterior is not useful, it is thrown away, it is temporary. What is interior is permanent, it is useful, that brings delight to our lives. The tenth station teaches us this truth, the truth of building inner beauty, the truth of recognizing the inner beauty in others, the truth of being not afraid of losing what is temporary, the beauty of holding on to what is inner, what our essence is. When we contemplate the tenth station, we understand that Jesus was not afraid to lose his garments. He was not afraid of leaving his passion with love. He was not afraid to lose his life for our sins because he knows what he is. And now we know what he is. He is God. He is love. This is the essence and this is permanent. Therefore, when we contemplate this 10th station, let's remember not to judge people by the things that they have. Rather, let's respect them for what they are. Ourselves too. Let's not search only things to have. Therefore, we might be better. Rather, we shall try to build up our inner beauty. Let's try to build up our inner sense. Let's, have, let's be secure of our own place in the hands of God by recognizing our own inner sense. May God bless us and may his passion bring us liberty from our sins. God bless. Keep safe. Let us pray. Lord, grant us merciful hearts that we may bring your reconciliation and forgiveness to all. Lord Jesus, help us walk in your steps. The 11th station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, o Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Then they crucified him. 
and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Father Daniel asked me to share my reflection about the 11th station. I've taken some time to pray about it. And uh, one of the first thoughts that uh, came into my mind was actually a memory about my experience in the Philippines. Maybe some of you know already that in the Philippines, in some villages, people react the crucifixion of Jesus. So on Friday, some people volunteer to take up the cross and walk on the streets of their village and then to be nailed on the cross with real nails but do not die on the cross. Uh, it's for, for them, it's a way to do penance, to uh, offer their suffering for the good of others, their relatives or friends, for instance, for the help of their uh, parents. And they believe that uh, uh, suffering, as a, suffering as a kind of redeeming power. I think that Jesus did not choose to suffer or to die on the cross. But uh, on his last meal with the disciples, he said, no one is greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. So love is the reason why Jesus accepted the way of the cross and wanted to show us God's love for us. And um, he, was, he was ready to, to accept all the consequences, to be scourged, to be mocked, to be uh, stripped off his garments, to be nailed, and eventually to die on the cross. One of my friends once told me, if you want to love, get ready to suffer. I think that uh, uh, suffering and pain enter our, into our life, not only as a result of love, but sometimes uh, uh, they enter our, into our life and, and uh, we make us feel like we, we are nailed to the cross. I mean, it's a situation in which uh, we feel uncomfortable, we, we feel pain, uh, we, didn't choose, we didn't choose that situation. For some people uh, it's a sickness, for some others it's a family situation, for some others it's a relationship. Of course if we can, if we have a choice, we run away from that situation, uh, from those people that cause us to, uh, to suffer. But uh, if we don't have a choice, we have to be in that situation and uh, uh, we can still choose the way you, we want to be in that situation. When we suffer, some people, some of us become grumpy, some others sad, for instance, uh, I like to be by myself alone, but uh, here uh, you cannot, you cannot because uh, I live in a church where there, are, there is a hostel with uh, more than 40 kids. When they come back from school, they want to play, they want to talk, uh, they want me to smile at them, um, and also there are people coming here visiting me, uh, they want to talk, uh, they want me to pay attention to them. Uh, so it's not easy, no? though sometimes I, I'm not in the mood or I feel pain, whether uh, physical pain or a psychological pain, I have to be there for them and uh, I have to find a way to uh, love them in a way they can understand. Uh, so sometimes you have to smile, you have to welcome them, you have to listen to them, you have to be patient, you have to comfort them, you have to uh, help them in what they need. And uh, sometimes uh, uh, it's not easy. Uh, love, yes, love brings suffering, but sometimes uh, to love while you are suffering is even harder. And so what we can do is uh, ask for uh, asking for Jesus' help. Uh, Jesus, while he was on the cross, has uh, shown us that uh, to love while you suffer is possible. Um, while he was uh, on the cross, he was able to to love the people around him, starting from the uh, his enemies. He was he was forgiving and praying for them. Uh, he was uh, quiet while the people and the elders were uh, mocking him. 
and he was able even to comfort the crucified, the, the robber crucified with him. Uh, so though Jesus, uh, Jesus was on the cross uh, with uh, his feet, his hands uh, nailed to the cross, uh, he was able to show love uh, to others. And uh, um, so the, the cross that uh, for some people uh, as a symbol of suffering for us Christians has become uh, the symbol of uh, the greatest love the world has ever known. Let us pray. Lord, grant us perseverance that we may never stop seeking you. Lord Jesus, help us walk in your steps. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, your passion and death is the sacrifice that unites earth and heaven and reconciles all people to you. May we who have faithfully reflected on these mysteries follow in your steps and so come to share your glory in heaven, where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. So here we are. Thank you again for praying with us. And uh, I am so happy to have Father Paolo. I would like to invite um, Michelle to share again the link. I'm going to talk briefly about our Pine Sponsorship Saturdays program. This is a great program. Through the Sponsorship Saturdays program, you know, we support around 2,000 children in five countries. Of course, one of these countries is Thailand. And tonight we will be supporting Thailand where Father Paolo takes care. Um, we already sponsor 157 children. It's, uh, I prayfully ask you if you want to commit, it's really a $20 a month commitment. Only for $20 a month, you can sponsor a child, you can grant a child education, health care, clothes, food, and more than that, a safe environment where the child can actually grow into a free man, a free woman, and can be, of course, exposed to the Catholic faith, which is basically the reason why we are missionaries so i really really prayfully encourage you it's your own less than a dollar a day but in the lives of those little brothers and sisters it makes a huge huge difference so uh, the link will lead you actually to um, the website, the page where we currently have 33 children available for and in, in the mission, you know, of Father Paolo. But now I would like to introduce you, Father Paolo. And, um, and I want to take even the chance to thank you all because I know that among you, there are already sponsors. I want to thank you so much for supporting us and i know that there are sponsors that have been sponsoring kids for over 60 years over 60 years wow that is amazing so let me introduce you to father paolo father paolo is a good friend of mine and when i joined pime i was in the seminary i was just a seminarian and uh, father paolo uh, was working as outreach um, in the outreach ministry. And uh, that's when we met together. 
And um, so I was helping as a seminarian. And then when I was ordained, he was, of course, um, sent to Thailand. So it's been probably already, what, 10, 11 years, 12 years that you are in years, yes. But please introduce yourself. Tell us something about yourself. Hi, everyone. I am Father Paolo, and uh, I'm from Italy. I think you know because uh, my English is Italian English, so uh, forgive me if I made some mistakes. And uh, so I I spent my my formation in uh, in Italy and then to the Philippines, as I shared with you in the uh, just a while ago. Uh, I was uh, three years in the Philippines uh, to uh, to study my theology uh, studies. And then I moved to Italy, back to Italy, where, well, uh, where I was ordained as a priest, missionary priest. Then I spent three years in the, in Italy uh, to, to help uh, for the vocational uh, campaign. Mm -hmm. And then I moved here to Thailand. Uh, usually, you, you, usually we have uh, three years to study the language. And then I was assigned in uh, Bangkok and uh, uh, where I took care of a foundation, and uh, we that foundation we welcome the kids from the slums, and then uh, just recently, three years ago, I moved here to the northern part of Thailand, which is very close to the border with Myanmar, and uh, so more or less this is my my life. And uh, if I am correct, you actually came to Detroit to learn English before you went to the Philippines, right? Yes, yes, I was in oh. Detroit. Uh, I don't know where you stay now because I, I understand that there are many changes about uh, the your place, but uh, we I was We are living... about to move, but we are still in Quincy, so I don't know if uh, you came to Quincy here. Yes. But we, we have been here for over 40 years, but... Uh, so yeah, this is actually where 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 we are, and uh, and it's amazing. It's amazing. Thank you for being with us. I'm reading a few of your um, texts in the chat. So I'm reading actually that uh, the students from the religious e education sponsor a child by donating a bit of their weekly allowances to this cause, oh my gosh, this is, you know, so important, so important to teach our kids to share, to share, to realize that our life can be, you know, based on me, myself and I. But let's share some pictures because I wanna show you some, you know, uh, here we go. I actually took this picture because I was so, blessed to be in Thailand last year. And um, here we were in Bangkok. And uh, my, uh, Paolo, why don't you tell us something about this picture? Yeah, so here I am with uh, some of the kids uh, in the, that uh, as a foundation, San Martin Foundation, we help them. They are from the slum. Uh, not all of them, for instance, uh, the one that you you see just the half face, no? Uh, his name is uh, Ikio, no? I, I can still remember him because uh, I I met him when I when uh, he was just one year old, because uh, he actually was born in the in the jail. Uh, his mother was uh, caught, and then uh, she went to the jail, and uh, she delivered uh, Ikio in the jail. But uh, she can. Uh, take care of their child just one year. After one year, they have to find uh, um, um, someone to take care of uh, their child. And so uh, uh, Iq's father is uh, probably from India, no? Because, uh, you know, when we asked the mother, she was very shy. She was not uh, ready to talk about uh, uh, her problems, her life. But uh, we met her in the... Uh, in the in the jail, and because uh, she was asking help for us for our for our help, and so uh, I took some information about uh, uh, Ikio. Then we we 
Ikio came with us to the foundation and afterwards we we didn't have the chance to uh, to know his father or his mother as well because uh, his mother was uh, released from the jail but uh, she didn't come to take a, his child so Ikio is actually still in the uh, in the foundation I, I left the foundation three years ago but uh, there are some of the kids that I know very well because uh, you know because of their story so uh IQ. how long did you stay there in bangkok uh what sorry for how long were you uh, in from 2004 uh, I, i studied two years for the language but uh, i was uh in actually in the missionary work since 2013 up to uh 2020 so oh, about uh seven eight. eight years yes and then so the You moved to Bantatai. Let's see if we have other pictures. Here we go. Uh, we are still in Bangkok here. Yeah, yeah. Right here is Bantatai. <laughs> it's the Thai. Oh, is it Bantatai? Oh my yes, God. but uh, this is the dining room. The, actually, it's not a room. The dining uh, uh, area. <laughs> area, exactly. <laughs> so... These kids are uh, from Totai and surrounded, actually, from the villages surrounding Totai. And you can see, actually, Father Mateus is basically on the right. Then I am there. Father Pong is the first Thai Pine missionary who is now in China. He is yeah. in Beijing, working in Beijing, studying, learning, actually, uh, Mandarin in uh, Beijing, and then Father Paolo, tell us something about Bantotai. So uh, Bantotai is a small village very close to the border with Myanmar. We are about 20 kilometers, kilometers from Myanmar, but some of the villages are just uh, on the borders. Uh, so uh, this, the kids here uh, actually are uh, wearing uh, normal clothes, but they are Uh, from two main tribes, Aka and Lahu. Uh, these tribes come from uh, China, but many centuries ago. And they moved here. And so they are, uh, uh, they, they settled here in Totai. Uh, they are just two of the tribes that uh, are, uh, are here around, uh, close to the borders. There are many actually. But um, Uh, these people belong to these kids belong to Catholic families, so uh, we welcome them in the hostel. Uh, these uh, pictures is taken in the hostel where uh, these kids live with us, and uh, uh, we bring them to school, and then they come back, and we have uh, activities with them. They study, they make their homework, they do their homework, and uh, so. We just lived together for a year. Just, uh, they just uh, uh, went back home uh, yesterday because uh, now in Thailand is uh, summer. Yeah, now it's, yeah, because your year begins again uh, in a couple in of months, right? Yes, in May, in May. In May. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the beginning of the year. Let's see some other photos because it, it was such, uh, oh, here we have girls making actually some artifacts. Yeah, on Saturday we have uh, this kind of uh, activities for them. So we, uh, they choose the, where they want to spend their, uh, their time. So this kid, these girls uh, are uh, making the uh, clothes that are uh, typical of their tribe. So you cannot see very clear, but on the table there are uh, Some of the, but they are very colorful, no? And uh, you need to be very patient. It takes time to make their clothes because, uh, um, you know, they are a uh, uh, make of uh, uh, different colors and so on. And uh, each tribe but, has its own colors, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, they, uh, but they, they, they can choose the pattern and uh, there are different patterns that are more traditional and other than. Other, pattern, other patterns that are um, modern. more uh, modern, yes. <laughs> because the youth are always... Let's see some other pictures because they... Oh, here we go. Tell us something about your parish. Because, you know, we don't really... When we think about a parish, 
we always have in mind our own parish, but tell us here, where are you in the... <laughs> yeah, uh, so um, since the beginning, Father uh, Zimbaldi, uh, who is the, the pioneer, um, came to Thailand and then uh, he uh, brought this, this style that uh, they use in Myanmar. So. Uh, they have uh, a, a center in which they build a, a church and then they build a hostel. But uh, sometimes they build this uh, center not uh, in a place uh, where there are Catholics, but just because uh, it's uh, useful because it's at the center of the, the, the area they take care of. So here in Totai, we are at the center of the parish, but there is just uh, the church and then the hostel. But in this uh, village in this uh, small town to Thai, there are no Christians, there are no Catholics. So majority of them are uh, Chinese or uh, uh, different tribes. And so uh, I stay here in the center the weekdays because uh, I stay with the kids. But then on Saturday and Sunday, I go to the chapels, the different chapels that are spread uh, around to the different villages around the, the center. So here in, uh, in Totai, we have uh, uh, 25 villages uh, where there are Catholics. So uh, every Saturday morning and then afternoon, and then Sunday uh, in the afternoon, I go to the villages and I say the, the mass for them. Um, that's, while, that's amazing. Uh, that's amazing. I got the privilege to be there with Father Paolo last year, and uh, I was able to experience, let's say, a uh, regular Father Paulus weekend. So on Saturday, we went in the morning to visit a village and then in the afternoon, a different village. And then on on Sunday, we were in a different village celebrating mass. So, so you, so just be grateful <laughs> if you have yeah. a parish next to your house and you can enjoy even multiple masses you know on saturday or sunday you know that's a gift it's it's a gift from god don't take that for granted if you have multiple priests uh, you know that can actually offer uh this is actually one of those chapels that father paulo was talking about this might be saint peter's if i am correct i can't read yes the, yes the, he's the uh but and we built this chapel through the yeah. Pine Chapel program. So another huge thank you goes to our Pine Chapel program uh, supporters because see a community can get together before because of you because of the the, the it's a very nice chapel and um, wow you know. Uh, so many memories and uh, you probably can't really see that but we are in the forest you can see the clouds actually around but it's it's basically it's a forest and uh, trees everywhere tea plantations and uh, we can probably change picture and our time unfortunately you know we 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 really have only a few minutes left, but I would like to ask you something about the sponsorships at the distance program <laughs> to tell us, uh, I don't know, to share with us one story of one, you know, child that is there with you that we sponsor so people can actually understand. We had a SIP already, you know, uh, but we would love, you know, to hear a, another story from you so we can better understand the impact that our sponsorships at the distance program has. Yeah, um, actually, I, I can tell you uh, one story, but um, I see that there is a, a pattern here in the sense that uh, many of the kids that uh, are staying with us uh, uh, usually uh, they they have many brothers and sisters, so they uh, they stay either with the mother or the father, mainly with the mother. But uh, since uh, uh, 
the the area where I stay is um, uh, I the, the the main job they can do is uh, agriculture. So uh, you don't get um, uh, a, a great salary. So many of the parents of our kids move to uh, to the, the, the city to Bangkok or to Chiang Mai, you know, that are the big two cities here in Thailand. So they leave their children with their uh, grandparents. And uh, so uh, the, the, the income is not uh, really uh, much. So that's why many of the people uh, ask for help. And uh, we help them, whether the kids are at the village or here at the center. Uh, now we are facing a new situation in which uh, uh, we are very close to the border. So we see that uh, uh, many people from Myanmar are coming here uh, because they belong to the same tribe of the people that are living here. So uh, the language is not a problem for them because they can speak their uh, tribal language. But, you know, they don't have any documents. And so uh, and so they don't uh, they, they have to start a new life. They have to settle. So. Uh, they don't have any job. They have to uh, look for a job, and mainly they go to uh, to pick up the tea leaves or coffee. Uh, so it's um, a job where you cannot get uh, a lot of money. You know? And so through your help, we we help these people. This year, we just uh, last month we um, make a, a, a let's say meeting for the. Uh, new kids that are coming to our hostel uh, next year. So uh, from the first year for grade, first grade, no, we have uh, we will uh, welcome eleven kids. Only two of them are from here, and the other nine are from Myanmar. No, so yeah, you, we need you... to just to remind. Basically, in Myanmar, as you know, there is a civil war going on. And I yes. really ask you, please, to pray for our missionaries in Myanmar, because the situation is getting worse and worse. Even I, I'm going to ask you to pray for Father Enrico in a special way, because Talonji is a is a very dangerous area. They were bombing there, and uh, he decided to stay and to support people of course to welcome everybody who is in need and since father paulo is right there on the border people just there is a river so people cross the river and yeah. they are in thailand so so please keep them in in uh, your prayers because that's that's what we really need we need jesus do you have a story of a child so um, there is uh, one child here in our hostel. Actually, uh, he now is a fourth grade child. No, his uh, his name is Narondet, and Narondet uh, comes from a family in which uh, actually he lives with uh, uh, his grandmother, and uh, his mother now is in jail as well. Uh, his father, I don't know where is his father actually. Um, he's very alive. Very alive. He's, he's a bit. Uh, <laughs> stubborn in the sense that uh, he lives in uh, his, this family and where uh, there is uh, his grandmother and then there is uh, his uh, uncle uh, which, um, who is the, the 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 brother of his mother and uh, you know one of the one of the problems here is uh, opium as well in the sense that this area is very famous you know it's very known for uh, 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 cultivate uh, for um, growing opium so now, thanks to the, the, the queen, the, the people here grow coffee and tea. But from Myanmar, there are people coming. No? Uh, so uh, opium was uh, like our uh, cigarettes in the sense that it's not uh, a great issue for them, especially the elders. They use uh, opium very often. So um, uh, if uh, Narundet stays with, with his family, uh, so uh, he is going to face, uh, to see uh, uh, his parents, his, not his parents, his relatives to, to use, uh, to make use of opium. No? Uh, but fortunately, he's with us no? and we visit him regularly. So we know the situation in the family. And um, 
uh, he's safe. He's very strong, actually, because, um, um, and, uh, you know, he's very stubborn. And so uh, this stubbornness uh, sometimes uh, has a, uh, a good uh, a sign in the sense that uh, he knows I'm that. I'm very uh, stubborn. I don't know if that's a good <laughs> sign, but I am stubborn. I can tell you. <laughs> But, but this is just to tell cool, you huh? that through the sponsorship set a distance program, you know, we can keep a child away from, uh, you know, an unhealthy environment. You know, when the parents are not there for multiple reasons, and then you have drug addicted or alcoholic or other kinds of problems, violence, and so much more. It's better for the child, you know, to be able, you know, to have a meal three times a day, to, you know, have clothes. I know what I'm saying sounds very basic, but so many kids, unfortunately, face, you know, hard, hard uh, situations, you know, in their lives. So the sponsorship set a distance program gives them the opportunity to get food, clothes, a safe environment, and more than that, an education. Education is what can actually break the chains of poverty. So I want to thank you so much. We just need, you know, time. Okay, is unfortunately we we don't have more time, but, you know. Uh, can you just uh, end uh, this um, uh, Stations of the Cross with a message to our supporters, a message to all those who are probably wondering, uh, you know, why should I uh, sponsor a child? So... Um... What I see here now, I moved here uh, just three years ago, so uh, I know very little about the, the situation here, but uh, I see that uh, the people here are poor in the sense that uh, it's not the, the Thailand that you know from, uh, that I think, that I, at least I knew when I was in, uh, in Italy. Uh, you know, you know, Bangkok, you know, the hotels, you know, the beaches, you know, the, uh, the nightlife, but... Uh, uh, here is a an, another Thailand, and uh, so you see that people are struggling with uh, daily life in the sense that uh, their life is very simple. Uh, they just go to the fields, and they collect some tea leaves or coffee, and then they have to sell it. Uh, so, uh, if uh, it's very hard for them to support their uh, children, of course, uh, their children can uh, if they can still be living with them, with their parents, uh, and uh, they just, their future is just to uh, to collect tea leaves and to collect coffee, unless we make a change in their life. And as uh, Father Daniel says, uh, education is very important. So we, the sponsorship uh, is useful for them to have uh, a place to stay, uh, of course, to know Jesus, but especially to be able to live in the in the society because some of them are not really uh, able to do that no? so it's uh, good for them to uh, to have education and without your help we cannot uh, uh, they cannot uh, send their kids to the to school because uh, even the distance actually the villages are not close to the to the That's school true. no so they, if they have to bring them every day, it's very hard for them. So by being here, we can just uh, bring them to the school that is very close. Uh, and also some kids, uh, they need um, help more than the others. For instance, Naron that, that I told you um, is a collector. So whatever he finds and he likes, uh, even if it's a garbage that he, he finds on in the, in the river close to our uh, center, he, 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 he picks them and then he uses for a year. He has to survive. So uh, his mentality is like that. So um, uh, I see that uh, uh, 
especially the, the lives of some people uh, change because uh, they stay with us and we can help them. Um, the best way to, to, to see that is to come here. I mean, I, mean uh, I, I invite you to come to, to see a different side of Thailand and then you will realize that uh, uh, it's not uh, the lights and the, uh, the colors of Bangkok, of course. Thank you. Thank you so much. One more thing. Can you give us a blessing in Thai, please? Okay. Pachau Satikaptan Ko Pachau Puson San Panupa Prabida La Prabut La Pratit Pratan Prapon Katan Tang Lai Turn. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you I'll very much. See you next week. Thank you, Father Paolo. Thank you, Marina. Michelle is going to share again the link if you want to sponsor one of our children is twenty dollars per month and uh i'll see you next week our live guest is gonna be sister roberta pignone and we will go to bangladesh at the damien hospital with lepers and uh, people um, from bangladesh so Thank you so very much. God bless you all. See you next week. Ciao Daniele, grazie. Grazie Paolo, ciao.